there's nothing to be scared of. I'm ready to pull this heavy jump here and uh, just smell it. So watch out, guys. This is the spot right here. As a result of the economic instability in places like Lagos, Nigeria, the streets continue to overflow with an influx of men and women from other states that have to find a way to fend for themselves. My name is Matthew Tintoke Suleiman. I'm a BMX rider here in Lagos State. Many young, driven men and women leave their lives behind in their hometowns to come to Lagos with the biased belief that they go blue. I was born in Kano State. I'm 26 years old. I was born in the family of eight and I'm the firstborn. In Kano State, I went to the apostolic school then when I was still very young. Then later, I had to change my school based on some financial issues, I had to go to government school and uh, then I attended Ufai Community School there and uh, that's how it has been going. We left Kano State in 2004 and uh, we came to Ibadan. Then I continued my schooling also in Ibadan, in Atulu Model School. Then I continued to Mufuta Olanimu Comprehensive High School too in Ibadan. After finishing my DSS 1 in Ibadan, my dad decided to process my school here in Lagos State because he works here as a mechanic and he also wants me to be master of his trade also. So I he processed my school to Itere Community High School where I, I successfully finished my GS2 also but based on some misunderstanding that I had then with my dad because his workshop is actually close to a trailer park so he actually tried to caution me based on some mistake I made in the workshop then I mistakenly slept under one of the trailers he was like, oh, there's no way for them to take me back to my dad because they are going to Kano State. And I was like, it's fine, let's go. It's going to be like an adventure for me. Going through that journey together, I felt at home, you understand? They made me feel at home. They are like my friends, they are like my brothers because I already grew up in Kano. So it wasn't really strange for me. The first thing I did was to go and see some of my old friends and uh, visit them, just let them know I came back for some things and I went back to the truck and I, that's how I continued working as a uh, motorboy. <laughs> Money, 
On getting to like one year with them, so he decided to like keep releasing the truck for me and I keep driving and keep driving till I become a pro truck driver. Then on coming to Lagos on our last trip, which I stopped. He said he couldn't sleep overnight, like he was busy thinking about me that he just wants me to be safe and this that. So I said, okay, what is it? 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 So I said, okay, I said, okay, I said, okay, I said, okay, I said, I said, okay, 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 so that's how I quit being a truck driver and I came back to the workshop and working with him since then. In Nigeria, if you're not a doctor, engineer or lawyer, most parents would say that their children have chosen to throw their lives away. Yeah, so this is my dad. I'm working with him here in the garage. He just came back from test running one of the vehicles he's working on. Working with my dad has been the greatest thing ever to me because there is no way anyone would ever teach you how to work like your dad, you understand? Because there are some secrets about mechanical works that some bosses out there will never show their apprentice until a, he or she gets to a level that they know that, okay, you can at least show him some. For me, that wasn't a problem because my dad is the man of the work then, so he taught me everything, he showed me everything, even right from my young age, he showed me everything and I felt so comfortable with it. I'm only part of my engine, mechanic. So, so quite good. Oh, good. Very, 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 very. If my battle was to be a one engine, can you take him for what kind of daddy? I feel it. Daddy, I feel it. When I was really young, then in Kano State, as a government school student, most of the students they come to school with their bicycles, which I never had the opportunity to. But here in Lagos, since I'm working with my dad and I know I'm getting some money and I can afford to buy a bicycle, even if my dad don't want to buy it for me, but I can afford to buy, so I'll just need his permission. But because of the lack of sustainable support, most young Nigerians have to resort to a stable nine to five while still trying to uphold that side hustle. In this case, BMX and extreme sports. Because of the respect, culture, and discipline instilled on our kids at a very young age, most children find it extremely difficult to share their dreams and desires with their parents. My first bicycle, I purchased it for 7,000 naira. For me to take the bike home was another big issue for me because I know my dad is actually going to beat me or caution me or maybe even spoil the bike. So I left the bike with my friend for like three days. But within these three days, I started acting like a, like a saint boy to my dad. You know, whatever he wants me to do, I will do and I will do. And you understand, I make sure he's always happy with me. I even buying gifts. But he was, he was like, ah, come, son, what, why are you doing all this? It's like something is, I'm smelling something, I'm suspecting you. I was like, oh, no, I just want you to be happy. You know? And uh, he was like, OK, we'll see. But I know something is hidden somewhere. So on the third day, I decided to buy him a drink. And uh, I, I walk up to him. The bike is not with me. So I knelt down. I was like, daddy, I, I offended you. But I know you'll forgive me. This, that. And I now explain that. I, you know, I've been saying I need a bicycle, I need a bicycle, and I've tried my best with the support of one of my friends. I purchased one, but it's still with him, but the bicycle is actually fine. It's, the bicycle is very fine, and I know you will like it, but I want to be using the bicycle to help out with maybe some errands 
and maybe if I want to go to the church, I can use my bicycle, this, that. And I explained, and it was not like, I know that you are up to something. These days, I will be this, this, that. And I said, okay, can I see the bicycle? And I was like, oh my God, I hope he's not going to like seize the bicycle from me. It took me another two days for me to bring the bicycle. So when I brought the bicycle to him, I was like, okay, fine, no problem. But I'll put a padlock on the bicycle. Whenever I want you to use it, it's when you are going to use it. I'll like, okay, no problem, fine. If that's the rule. And I abide by the rule till when he wants to travel back to Ibadan to go and see my mom. He left the bike unlocked for me. So I kept riding the bike and uh, that's how I came across some guys at the National Stadium doing some cool stuff on their bike. And I was like, wow. And that's how the passion for doing stuff on bicycle, I don't know it's called stunts, well, I just know they are doing cool things with the bike. And that's how I have the passion for it, but I can't start because my dad has to know about what I want to do. So I have to keep it low till he comes back. Then I tell my dad also, ah, I saw some guys doing this, doing that on their bicycle, standing on the bicycle, doing a lot of tricks. And he was like, hmm, these are the things I've been warning you about. Oh, is it because I left the bike open or they unlocked? I was like, oh no, dad, I'm sorry, but I'm just saying, it was not like you need to be serious with your work and face your work fully. So after like six months, yes, I went to the stadium again to see those guys doing cool tricks on a Sunday. So I saw them, they were doing different kind of stuff. So I tried some and I got myself injured. So I'm coming back home. My dad asked me what happened and I was like, I fell on my bicycle and he goes, I told you, I told you this bicycle, enjoy it, stop riding it, this, that. I was like, ah, it's fine, but it's just a bruise. In most cases, not until a Nigerian father sees the fruit of their child's labor would they get on board and support their passion. <laughs> He, he, he gave me a condition, he was like, whenever I ride, if I have any injury, I'm on my own. Maybe if I have any major fracture, I'm on my own. And I was like, mm, okay, dad, it's fine, no problem, let's do it that way also. Because it's actually my passion, so I decided to keep it real with him that way. So whenever I had any injury on my back, it's none of my dad's business, like, I'm on my own, I'll take care of it on my own till maybe I'm fine, but as the sport is going going on with me now, he, he found out that it's like BMX is taking me to places and uh, I've been achieving things while riding bicycle. So it was not like, okay son, it's like, I'll leave you to do what you love doing and uh, make sure you are safe and just be safe out there whenever you go ride. Besides the setbacks of a broken ankle, Starboy's passion to become the best BMX rider was able to overpower his pain. In Nigeria, religion is one of our strongest exports. 
to a fault where the duplicity of one's devotion outweighs the importance of their spirituality and morality. Due to the overwhelming indoctrination of sermon, many Nigerian parents would rather see their children fight for the lives they wish they had than allow them pursue their own passion. But ask yourself, is it the fault of the parents or the fear of the lack of stable resources in one's community to help future generations? As, an, as a small boy living in Africa, I come to understand that one of those problems we have as an African is failure to understand the children we are giving back to. The, the problem is general. It also affects me as a person. And as I'm moving from one place to another, because as a pastor, you will be transferred from one city to another. You can be taken to village at any time. You are bound to go there to do whatever God uh, is having for you there. So I come to understand that God created human beings to solve problems on earth. And when everyone of us is coming from him, he gave us one thing or the other to do on earth, to solve problems, to make people happy. Do you understand? I understand that. And that's why when I came and uh, I understand the stuff is made up and what he chooses to do, I encourage him. Because he also told me the, 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 the pressure from the, 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 the parents and also those who are around him who never believed in what he believed in. And I told him, I said, those people are not your creator. And they, they don't know what exactly you would do to fulfill God-given purpose on earth. Pastor is actually the best man ever. Like, he's very nice. He's very helping. He, he understands whatever kind of situation we are going through. Because even as a then, when I broke my ankle, his wife used to help me a lot. Like, my breakfast, my dinner. Like they got me big time. I really appreciate them and I thank God for giving me such a good pastor actually because I don't know how pastors that are nice. These days with a smartphone and a strong enough data plan, anyone can learn a new set of skills with a simple search on YouTube. I went online and I just typed on BMX videos and I now saw different tricks the white guys are doing. I was amazed. I was like, oh my god. So this is actually what this bike is meant for. Then I mean for this, then that, that I started, I just typed how to do tricks on BMX. Then I saw beginners tricks and I started learning them one after the other. The first one I learned, which actually gave me some fame in the stadium, what was a bunny hop, how to like hop over something very high. And I learned down very fast. I learned it within two weeks. I had my very first worst injury on BMX while I was trying to master a trick we call manual. It's like you going on a high speed and uh, you have your front wheels up, just your back wheel on the floor and you keep it rolling maybe for minutes or for, for a very long time. So while I was trying to master that trick on an uh, environmental day, yes, it happened on an environmental day along Akirele Road. I was coming with a very high speed actually. I was like, okay, this is the right mo motion. I need to master this trick. So on pulling up, after for like, after pulling up for like 10, 15 seconds, I just observed that the bike is taking me higher more than what I can control. I can't get off the bike because the wheel is just one I have left. There's no way I can apply brakes to that one. There's no way I can release the bike because it's like the bike had me stuck in between my motion. So for me to get my feet off the pedals, I landed my feet on the floor wrongly, then I now fell on it. That's how I got my ankle messed up. Though I still managed with one foot like that to get myself to stadium, because nobody will know what happened to me if I should be on the floor there. So I managed to get myself to the stadium and I met my guys and I was like, my ankle is messed up and they took me, a friend of mine, um, real one, he took me to one of his auntie, like their, one of their big mommy. So getting there, they helped me massage the leg tie it with some bandage so that I can still manage myself back home. So on getting back home, I went to carry out an X-ray scan on the leg and I found out the whole thing is, is messed up. So 
I kept myself indoor going through my treatment. I handled everything myself. And after four months, when I said, okay, I can be limping actually with the bike, but I'm always very comfortable if I'm on my bicycle. But walking barefooted, maybe on the street, using my normal, just for me to walk on the street, I can't. You will know something is wrong with me. But if I'm on my bicycle, you can never know, maybe my ankle is messed up or something. So that's how I keep it going. And I successfully managed and handled the first injury. In 2014, they uh, brought up a competition for us. It's like uh, BMX and skating competition in Teslim Balogun. And that was how we were like, oh, we can do this. After the whole contest went down, I won the BMX aspect of the competition. So when they want to call me on the stage to award me, they were like, so what's your nickname? What should they call you? Because everybody then, they, we have Ghost 1, Ghost 2. So they were like, they should call me maybe Ghost 2 or Ghost 3. And the guy was like, no, 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 Ghost is not the name. You are the winner of this team, dude. How far? This is a star boy. And that's how the name Starboy started. They called me Starboy coming on stage and before you know it, that's how they presented the prize of the runner-up for me as Starboy. And the whole city has some beautiful, beautiful structures which some people can't actually see the way we see it. Some people might see a structure and they'll be like, oh, this place is just nice. And if we see it, we'll be like, I can do a trick on this place and I can do another trick down this place. <laughs> you know, hitting sports all around the city of Lagos has actually been one of the best things. Much example where be Pelanisi, Baba and Nicola are in your past. We call it on you, but the only thing is much more teacher. Okay, keep a lot of Kuba is Taloju. What we like in here in Nigeria, and it has to do with BMXing. It's number one, the recognition. The sport is not well recognized here in Nigeria. Then two, as the sport is growing gradually, we are lacking skate park. We don't have the right equipment for this sport to keep growing to the extent it has to grow. So we need the community at first to like help us with maybe a, a space, like a piece of land that we can build one or two gadgets that we love to use, like the ramps. We would like the government to also support us by helping us build a skate park somewhere very nice here in Lagos State to make sure we get some of the youths out of the streets because this sport is actually going to bring a lot of young youths out there together. Both the rich ones and the poor ones, they are actually going to come together to have fun and actually create a career for themselves in BMX. Today I'm at Unilag for the BMX and skateboard freestyle competition and uh, I'll actually go inside to go and do some warm up which is going to be nice. From Freedom Park to National Stadium, 
with several iconic sites from the historic city of Las Gidi. Men and women like Starboy are slowly turning the city into their own personal X Games arena. My name is Valentin Nekanem. Um, I'm the founder and organizer of this event. As you can see, it's a huge success. I'm also um, the creative director of Streambox. This event is powered by Streambox, a company that I co-own with a partner, Mr. Thomas Samali. Um, we've been trying to put this together for like three years now. And um, to God be the glory, here it is. It's happening. It's a success. I feel great. I feel excited. I feel happy for the fact that we've been able to pull this through. The participants have been awesome. You know, for us, we feel skateboarding and BMS culture is something that we really, really need to embrace in Nigeria. The, as you can see, or as you saw earlier, the, the BMX riders and the 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 and, the, skid, and the, the, BM, the BMS riders and the skateboarders, they were awesome. They were magnificent. You understand? So we want to grow the culture. It's an annual event that we'll probably be doing every year. All right. So it's great. It's a great feeling having this come true for us, you know. And um, hopefully in the nearest future, we'll do greater and greater things with it. What kind of about we win as Starboy? Oh, Starboy. Starboy is one of those participants that, right from the beginning of this event, he was one of those guys I met first, and he introduced me to a whole lot of um, the BMX riders, and um, we became friends, all right? He, has, he played a very crucial role in making this happen. What he did mostly was trying to encourage the BMX riders that this event is something they really need to, you know, believe. They really need to tie, um, support, and participate. The uniqueness, the credibility of the event, he played a huge role. And um, we are glad that he actually won. He has been awesome. Starboy, without missing words, Starboy is a great BMXer. He's someone that I appreciate and love so much for trying to make the culture of BMX in Nigeria, you know, huge and celebrate and be celebrated internationally. So. He's a great guy. Thank you, sir. Nice Good work for the next edition. From Freedom Park to National Stadium, with several iconic sites from the historic city of Las Gidi, men and women like Starboy are slowly turning the city into their own personal X Games arena.